Hello everyone, I'm Lynx4 and welcome to Undermate, the newest Undertale fan game about mate? Attention, this is the English translation, it might not be that good, but th who cares? Who cares? Before starting the game, please select a gender. Uh, we are a boy, so oh my god. Oh my god, I, 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 yeah, this game already. Long ago, the powerful race called humans ruled the earth. There were two kinds of people. First, who had determination and had souls of different colors. The color of the soul was determined by leading character of trait of that person. The most powerful of these were red souls as they had the most determination in them. The second, who had magic, their souls were white and had very little determination in them. Humans like that often had an unusual look because their souls and bodies were filled with magic. They could have horns, tails, different color skin, hair, and eyes. Such looks made some of them look more like a mythical creature than a human. After some time, people with determination became afraid of magical humans. Some even called them monsters. Ooh. Any small conflict were firewood for the bonfire of hate and dislike, and one day a real war broke out between the two sides. Naming the magical humans monsters, the determined ones imprisoned them in an underground under Mount Ebbet, sealing the exit with a powerful spell, the Barrier. The Barrier had incredible power. It was only the soul who had lots of determination and magic together that could destroy it. But there was no one with such soul in the world. The magical humans lived underground. They lost faith. Their hopes turned into ashes, and so it was for many, many years. Mount Ebbet 20 something. Once upon a time, an ape human fell into the underground. Their name was Frisk. They made friendship with magic people and showed that not all people who are filled with determination are evil. However, Frisk failed to free monsters. With a heavy heart, they left underground and nobody ever saw them again. The monsters continued to live in a prison. But now a hope rise in their hearts, a hope that someday will come and end their suffering. Under mate. So in case you guys did not get that, everyone's a human except some possess magic and some possess determination and all the people that had magic are now underground. In this world, everybody is connected with their soulmate from their birth. Soulmate or true couple, everyone calls it differently. But the meaning is the same. It is the closest person in your life. Closer than parents. Closer than friends. They understood you better than anyone and will always be on your side. Always. Even when the whole world will turn away. Many will wonder, and how can I find my soulmate? If you think about it, it could be anyone in the whole world. It's impossible to find your soulmate just by chance. That's what so-called tags are for. Finding your soulmate before reaching 16 years of age is an impossible task. Even if you assume that it's someone you know, you can't absolutely know until that fateful age. After reaching 16, a pair of marks appear on the soulmates' bodies. They are similar, but also unique for each pair of soulmates. Only connected soulmates have such marks. And marks have one interesting feature. When connected mates are close to each other, their marks begin to glow and soar slightly, thereby attracting their owner's attention. However, there are some cases when soulmate can feel his or her loved one before reaching 16. He or she can feel an inexplicable attraction to the soulmate, which is the reason which worries me a lot. I live in a small town near the root of Mount Ebbet. Although town is a pretty big word, it's more like a village. Not much space, everybody knows each other. My parents are not paying me attention, but I used to do a lot by myself. I understand that they work hard and have a lot of things to do, but sometimes I think they are not interested in me. I can't remember the last time we did something together. We don't even celebrate the new year, while everyone else does. Parents say it's just a waste of time, but looking at how happy our neighbors are during this holiday makes me feel sad. Despite my attempts to persuade mom and dad to celebrate it even just once, I failed. Is that too much to ask? At least once? I wanted to feel loved. Recently, I began to feel a strange feeling. Mountain, it attracts me. Is it possible that my desire to go to the mountain and my soulmate are connected? It's weird. I heard stories about magical people sealed under the mountain, but it's just a fairy tale, isn't it? But I started to feel strangely not so long ago. What if my soulmate is somebody from my town and recently he or she went to the mountain and has not come back yet? I heard that the village recently lost a few people. What if my soulmate was one of them? I winced because of the thoughts. 
What if they got lost? They got hurt. They're in danger. What if my soulmate is in danger? What if something terrible happened and they're waiting with hope for someone to find them? In fact, there is no clear reason to worry, but a bunch of different situations already appeared in my mind, and each one was hardly better than the other. I became nervous. There was just one thought in my mind. I gotta go to the mountain. I gotta rescue my soulmate. What if my thoughts are real? Yeah, I don't know for sure, but if I refuse to check, it will slowly torn my mind for a very long time. Right, I'll go to the mountain. I left the village and went to the forest where I was walking with a neighbor's kids sometimes. Passing through the forest, I came upon a path which brought me very high. There wasn't anyone around. The only thing I could hear was a bird song from the forest behind. So quiet and peaceful, I even forgot why I came here for the beginning. Going a little further, I found a cave entrance. There were some strange noises from the inside. I was curious, so I took a step into the darkness. I'd never been in the caves before. It was very spacious in here, but darker on than the outside. However, it has its own charming atmosphere. Fascinating. Especially all these stalactites and stagalomites. <laughs> Is that even how you say it? Hanging from the cave top and rising out from the ground. I try to get used to the darkness and keep going at the same time. Suddenly, I caught my foot on something. I thought I was about to fall and hit the ground, but I was wrong. I started to fall down. The cliff, which I couldn't see in the dark, played a role. I felt my heart stop like my whole life flashed before my eyes. I closed my eyes expecting something horrible. Hard hit. I imagine how my body crashes into the ground. But suddenly I realized that it was just my imagination. In reality, I felt something soft under me. Head suddenly starts to ache. I realize that I can't do anything, even open my eyes. Calm, quiet. So I was laying for some time, right until I heard a couple of quiet voices. Mom, here he is. God, it's true, another fallen human. Again, huh, guess they are doing these too often nowadays. What are we going to do? We need to take care of him. I'll help. It is my duty to take care of everybody who needs it. Huh? No doubt, bro. Come on, let's do it. Is he going to be alright? Who knows, buddy. I heard last words very badly, slowly fainting. Finally, I was in complete silence. I had a dream. Everything was so bright. I was standing somewhere high looking at the rising sun. There were some people around me. I heard a laugh. Everyone was so happy. We talked about different things. They called my name very often. But then everything disappeared. I quickly opened my eyes. The first thing I saw was the ceiling. The head didn't hurt so much when I sat down, so I was on a soft bed in a strange room. You can see we have one shot. We have human Azriel and Kara, which should be Frisk in the story. And this is actually a Russian YouTuber. But anyways, although I fell on something soft, it was not this bed. The lack of holes in the ceiling proved it. But then how did I get here? I stood up and looked around. The room was done in bright colors and slightly reminded me of my own. There was another bed near the opposite wall with some drawings above. Further from the bed stood a nightstand with a photo and a large wardrobe next to it. Near the bed, which I had risen from, were several large plush toys. I noticed them just now. The room was bright and clean. I was a little worried because I couldn't realize where I am now but I tried to sort all my thoughts so I could find it out. After exploring the majority of this room, I went out into the corridor through the door. The corridor was long and went in both directions. There was two doors and a mirror at the end of the left corridor, and a sweet smell of cinnamon was coming from the right one. My stomach growled and I turned right without ever thinking, the butterscotch pie, yeah! <laughs> I walked past the stairs leading down and went into the living room. A table stood in the left corner of the room. It was adorned with a vase of dried flowers and surrounded by chairs. Wood was slowly burning in the fireplace near the right wall. I put my hands in front of the fire. The flames was warm and soft, but I didn't get my hands burned. Funny. The smell of cinnamon wafted through the doorway at the end of the hall. I took a step forward, but then immediately stopped. A woman came towards me from the doorway. She didn't notice me at first, but after a moment, she was looking at me with a surprised look. Are you already awake, my child? Because they're all humans! Toriel, the human! It was strange that she called me child. Noticing the confusion on my face, the woman kindly smiled. 
Don't be afraid, my child. It's all over. You're safe now. I became calmer because of her tone, but my voice still waved a bit. Uh, who are you? Oh, I never introduced myself. My name is Toriel. I'm the caretaker of the ruins. I was attracted by the fact that she had a small horns. What? 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 I was attracted. She looked pretty. Magical. <laughs> if I am under the mountain, then all these tales about magical people are not tales at all. Where am I? You fell into the underground, my child. My son noticed it led you to me, and you already fainted, so we brought you here to our house. By the way, how are you, my child? My head hurts a little, but I'm fine, thank you. Glad to hear that. My child, I have to tell you something. This is very important. It's about your fate. My fate? You are in the underground now. Do you know the story about the long war? I remember the lines from the book in which I read about it and quietly repeated them out loud. People filled with determination sealed magical spells underground, creating a powerful spell called the barrier. Right. There is no way out of the underground at the moment. That is why you can't go home. But someone needs to take care of you here. Me and my friends decided to meet you at the evening so we can discuss your staying at our home. We do not want to hurt you. All this situation is unpleasant for both of us, my child. I hope you understand. I understand. Thank you, Toriel. She smiled again. I'm glad that you understand the situation. I felt that smell of cinnamon become more intense. Toriel felt this too. Oh, pie! It's burning! Don't burn the butterscotch pie! <laughs> With these words, she quickly fled to the kitchen. However, Toriel returned in a few minutes. I'm sorry, my child. I almost forgot about the pie. A little more. It would have burnt. By the way, what do you prefer, my child? Cinnamon or butterscotch? Didn't you already, like, bake it, though? <laughs> butterscotch? It's soft and so funny, but very sticky when melting. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, I understand. But you don't dislike cinnamon, do you? I mean, if you find it on your plate, will you turn your nose? Um, no, probably not. In fact, I love both. Oh, that's wonderful, because I just made a butterscotch cinnamon pie. My child, don't you want a piece? You haven't eaten anything since yesterday. Uh, sure. Yeah. I was really hungry, and the pie sounded like a good idea. My mother never bakes pies. I did not even eat a pastry at all. But there's such an opportunity. Missing it would be a terrible sin. <laughs> yes, I'm really hungry. So a piece of pie sounds good. Excellent. Wait a second. Hurry up. Toriel ran away and came back with a huge piece of pie on a plate, handing it to me. I nodded and took the plate. Oh, yes. It looked very yummy, that smell. I didn't notice. I already started to drool. I ate this piece very quickly and then returned an empty plate to Toriel. Thank you. It was very tasty. Oh, I'm happy you liked it. My child, there's plenty of time before the meeting. I really do not know what to do with you. Perhaps I could ask you for one request, although I'm worried about your safety. What kind of request? My friend came here in the morning and forgot his clothing item. I'm worried he might catch a cold. He lives not far away, and I would like to ask you to go bring it to him. No, probably it could be too dangerous for you, my child. Forget it. But you can walk around in the ruins. It's quite safe there now. And if something happens, I'm sure locals will help you. Besides, my son is there now. Maybe you will meet each other. But if you are not feeling very well, the best solution is to go and relax a little bit more. As I said, you have plenty of time. What do you think? Um, look at the ruins or volunteer to bring that thing to a friend. So, volunteer to bring that thing to a friend. M what to carry? Are you sure, my child? What if you get lost or something else? I am worried. I'm going to be alright, I swear. I tried to speak earnestly and smiled. Toriel sighed. Toriel went to the chair and grabbed some kind of cloth from its back. Holding it out to me, I took the thing. A scarf. Hmm. It was very, very soft red fabric, neatly folded into several layers. My friend lives in Snowden. Snowden is the second part of the underground. The passage between the ruins and Snowden lays under this house. Listen carefully. I will describe the exact path to you. I concentrated, listening to Toriel's words. Now get out of the living room and turn left. There's a staircase down. Go down and then right through the hallway to the very end to the large door. It's not locked. Left then right. Got it. And from now on, start Snowden. Come and go straight. 
gets to the bridge with the huge bars, pass through it. He's usually walking there. If you don't meet anyone, keep moving. But look, don't go too far. If there will be no one after, just come back. I hope I explained everything clearly. Yes, you did. I remember everything. Well, please take care of yourself, my child. After our dialogue was finished, we felt a slight burning smell. Oh! Torio immediately fled to the kitchen again. And there were some strange noises afterwards. I decided not to disturb her anymore, and by pressing the cloth tighter to my chest, walked away so that I can bring it to its owner. I left the room and turned left as Toriel told me, and then went down the stairs. There really was a corridor. I walked along it for a long time and eventually came to the big door. The door wasn't locked, so I just went through. Further beyond the door, there was a long corridor leading to a room with another door. The room was dark. Just faded rays of light were seeping through the ornaments with holes in it. The door seemed massive, but were open very easily. I went through it, not forgetting to close. As I walked out, a cool, refreshing breeze blowed right in my face. Where is it coming from in the underground? I guess it's magic. A thin layer of snow crushed under my feet. Luckily, I was wearing shoes, not some sort of sandals. Straight roads and rows of trees on both sides. I kept walking straight, like Toriel said. I quickly came to the bridge with bars and crossed it. Oh, the lamp. <laughs> I went to a small meadow. There was almost nothing except an observation post and a strange shaped lamp, very strange shaped. Near the post was a few people talking about something. The highest of them said something to the other two. Then I suddenly realized that I completely forgot to ask Toriel's friend's name. I didn't even know what he looks like. How can I find and give him this thing when I have no idea what I'm looking for. Silly links. I decided to approach people. Toriel mentioned that the locals can help me. Maybe they know her friend? Hey, sorry, can I ask you something? Two people who were standing face to face to me looked in my direction. The third turned after, but immediately froze in surprise. Human, you're awake! <laughs> now it's my turn to be surprised. He knows me? Oh, you brought my scarf. Wow, I forgot it on the chair in a hurry. The confusion resolved itself. There's no doubt he is Toriel's friend. Actually, I was struck by how tall he is at first. I wonder how old he is. Scarf? Oh, right, here. Papyrus' scarf. <laughs> I gave him the folded clothes, which pretended to be a scarf. The guy took it and launched completely with one swing. After a few swift movements, he wrapped it around his neck several times. Finally, the scarf ends crossed behind his back. The scarf was longer than Toriel's friend in full height, which led me in surprise because the guy was pretty high. <laughs> Thanks for bringing me my scarf. It's Toriel who asked you to do that, isn't she? Yeah. All oh, right. I need to introduce myself. I, the Great Papyrus, am the assistant of Undyne, our head guard, and the one who keeps order in Snowden. But you can just call me Papyrus. Nice to meet you, Papyrus. I'm Lynx. Nice to meet you too, Lynx. Thank you again. Where are you going now? Well, not really anywhere except back to Toriel's. Fancy coming with me to a near observation station? We can go back to Toriel's house together then. Sure. Then let's go ahead. Papyrus was acting very friendly and open. Deep down, I had a feeling that I can trust him as much as Toriel. Is it common for magical people to act like that? On the surface, only a few people would like to help a stranger in distress. Papyrus led me further. I did notice that the road is actually very long and almost always leads directly ahead. Soon I saw a meadow with an ice cold lake. Right where the road widened was another observation post, but this one looked a bit more like a big dog house. We walked closer and stood in front of the building. The observation post itself was empty. There was almost nothing inside except for one poster. However, there was some kind of reception bell on its surface. I decided to move it to the right. But suddenly, someone jumped right out of the post, seriously scaring me. Beware! Who goes there? <laughs> I nearly jumped from fright. I saw something moving. He blinked. And when I see moving things. Hey, doggo, it's me, Papyrus. Ah, Papyrus, hi there. Seeing Papyrus, doggo jumped back over the top of the post and moved closer to us. What brings you here? Undyne wanted you to have this. Papyrus took out a small stack of some papers and handed them to Dago. He took them, quickly revised and nodded, laying papers down on the post's surface. Thanks! Anything else? Papyrus looked at me and felt a little timidly. Papyrus saw it and smiled, winking at me, and then just stood silent, not making a single sound. I didn't really get what he's up to, so I just watched. 
Doggo tensed. Papyrus? Papyrus wasn't responding. Papyrus, don't you dare! Pap stretched out his hand and patted Doggo on the head. <laughs> Papyrus, you know I don't pay attention to things that are not moving! Doggo's face was beyond any description. <laughs> I couldn't resist and began to giggle. Papyrus smiled widely. Ha <laughs> ha! Sorry, Doggo! Doggo was clearly unhappy, but not angry. He jumped back inside his post, throwing with a few dog treats in his mouth. Call me again if you need anything. I will! Papyrus said goodbye to Doggo and approached me. I already stopped laughing, but Smile still refused to lift my face. Well, we can go back to the ruins now. Yeah, thanks Papyrus. It's a pleasure, human. And we're going to go ahead and save the episode here. And we're going to stop it and we'll continue on in the next episode. I'll go ahead and save it right there. Very interesting. I like seeing these characters. We should have one, maybe two more episodes. It is a demo, but there might be changes. Are we going to meet our soulmate? Who is our soulmate? Are we going to see Sans? There's plenty more characters, I believe. I don't know. Anyways, stay tuned. I will upload the next part soon. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Links for more. Out.